Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mike One, you're awesome, and welcome to the 10th episode of Arma 3 Shoutcast. With me today is Yahtzee, the leader of Mercy. Hey Mike One, thanks for having me, man. No problem, man, and before we get into this game, let's start by introducing the teams. So on Red 4, we've got Bravo Company, MSG, the 48th MI, and 21st Viking. And on Blue 4, we've got OGC, the 29th ID, the 3rd ID, Mercy, and the 2nd MSOB. As we got lots of fire right now coming from both teams. Off 4 defending in the valley, taking fire from the Blue 4 on the high ground. Yasi, what do you take of the initial engagements of this match? Well, the Blue 4 have that height advantage and they are putting ton of fire down there on this three-man element of uh, Evil Mike and Valar and Ixus here and uh, they have the free reign to move with that fire going down and it's, it's, it's looking good. It's looking good for blue right now. That's the southernmost element of Op4 taking fire from the hills of the blue four advance and quickly we're going to shout out the objective for this match and that is the blue four must attack and secure the HQ complex of Op4, meaning, you know, inherently that Op4 have to defend this compound from Blue4 attack. As we see the Op4 decide to be, I guess, adopt a, a fairly strong defensive line across this elephant grass trench line. Unfortunately for them, the bulk of the attack is going to be coming from the mountains to the front, not necessarily from their flank. So these units down by, I, I guess, the extreme rear of that HQ complex aren't going to be very effective at this time. Yeah, right now they can't see anything. They, they have a complete heal and all this defilade. Um, blue is going to be able to walk right on top of them before anything happens there. Absolutely. Great views for Blue 4 looking down into that HQ complex as they see the whole of that valley. We see a team leader right now with his binoculars looking out towards the Op 4 defenders, marking positions for the advancing Blue 4 forces. And what about the strategy that Blue 4 has taken to advance here, Yahtzee? What do you think of that? Well, I like... Now Now, now they seem to be pushing pretty good. Um, that definitely they're using there in the middle. That is going to be very good for them. And they're going to be able to push really hard and really far up. And they're leaving uh, like a, you know, a base of fire up on that hill. And that hill has so, so good sight lines on everything. We just watched that deflate, and it does come all the way down to the Op4 defenses right now. So they can follow that that deflate all the way down and hit the Op4 lines in about you know 100 meters, 120 meters away without really being spotted or taking heavy fire. Oh, definitely. Oh, it looks like they've spotted some of the Red4 there in the elephant grass. So this is that's bad for Red4. Absolutely. So you know that their positions have been spotted inside this elephant grass, and arguably. That elephant grass should be, you know, the prime element of, of not being spotted. It is huge, it is bulky, but somehow, Blue 4 on that hillside have managed to spot the Alpha in here. Ladies and gentlemen, just a quick note that this event is part of Friday Night Fights, and that is a large scale Arma 3 player versus player match that takes place again every Friday, beginning at 7 30 Eastern Standard Time. If you want to get your military simulation or tactical realism unit involved, be sure to visit Bravo Company or BravoCo.us slash FNF for more info or just visit the links in the description. The two-pronged attack of Blue Force we see. Both are moving towards some kind of through some kind of defilade towards the op for defensive lines. Coming under contact right now, but I'm not sure if there's any effective fire happening right now. No, um, I think Op4 has lost one in this entire engagement so far, but... Yeah, and that one was lost, I believe, on the southern flank of, uh, of Op4. As we can see that there's a three-man unit of Valar instead of a regular four-man fire team. So unfortunately, they already took the first casualty. And ladies and gentlemen, it's good to point out, uh, point out right now that the teams are not necessarily balanced to start numerically. As we give, uh, I guess, the blue for the numerical advantage in these matches, simply because generally we find that defenders have a supreme defender's advantage, and therefore they get less units assigned to their team as a result. We've usually found that that's worked out pretty well to balance in the long run, but unfortunately for them right now, they've already taken a casualty, while I'm not sure if the blue four has taken any. No, I, I haven't seen any, any bodies going on yet. 
But they are taking the heavy fire. They're in that death blade now. And that tree. They're in the center. Stardog from Bravo Company deciding to push up, possibly to get eyes and some kind of scout of what's coming at them. I'm not sure how much he'll be able to see from his position, but there's a lot of blue four in these trees, Yahtzee. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think there's only, what, two, uh, maybe uh, one fire team of Op 4 firing right now, but apparently yeah. they see something up there in those trees. That's the Op 4 team in the Elephant Grass engaging blue four in those trees let's take a quick overview of the match so far as we see that the i guess maybe the the red four lines have slightly changed stardog being quite aggressive pushing forward uh trying to scud out what's ahead of them that that's the unit right here uh but the blue four their both of their attacks seem to have been stalled again yahtzee as they have stopped in their respective defilades uh and maybe just a few units pushing forward but nothing significant yeah, no, they, uh, looks like maybe regrouping, I don't, getting their comms back in check or something. Um, you'd think they'd be moving up somewhere at this point. Again, ladies and gentlemen, there is a 45-minute round timer for this match, so that means that Blue 4 have to secure that compound within 45 minutes or they risk losing the game. This, uh, this southernmost element, they had a good push going, but they've even just stop dead in their tracks and there should be no reason anybody could see them if they just advance forward um, they're now like on the low ground and have a bunch of elephant grass between them and trees and I don't know oh yeah looking at their perspective there's no way that southern op 4 element could be able to see them in the slightest perhaps they're they were kind of scared that there was some pot shots taking place between the teams at the beginning perhaps they were scared that that fire was coming in from a lot closer than they than they thought and therefore, they think that there's enemy a lot closer to them than they already are, or than they actually are, excuse me. That could be a good possibility. Um, the only person at this point that could see that movement would probably be Stardog. He has pushed up a lot further than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, he's a lone kind of scout out through the Red 4 lines. I, I cannot confirm, but I, I believe... No, Sklor is the... Sklor is the uh, is the platoon leader for the red side. But I believe Stardog is a squad leader, and he's doing some epic scouting work for his team right now. And arguably, I think, uh, yeah, see, that's exactly what Red 4 needs. They need to identify where that Blue 4 push is coming from and then move units to counteract it if they can. Definitely, definitely. They they need something. Blue 4 knows exactly where pretty much all of Op 4 um, are located right now. Yeah, they have the advantage of having a good amount of, of you know, units with with binoculars on top of these large hilly rises and they can basically see the whole of the valley where this hq complex is situated and scout any op for that might peek out from that elephant grass and again it looks like we come to a halt <laughs> It's a war of maneuver right now as both teams struggle to you know, find their best options in terms of where they should move their units. It seems like Blue 4 has decided to finally continue their advance down that hillside ravine. But again, that advance is also pretty slow. They're sending a scout out into the yeah. open. Or perhaps he just he wasn't exactly sure where he was going. He's running back to his lines now. <laughs> <laughs> but but he was getting pretty st close to Stardike's position. I mean, if he ran out a little bit further, I'm sure that Stardike might have been able to see him out in the open there. Right, yes. Well, he might have already. You know, he did make it pretty far out in the open. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying these videos so far, I know there's a little bit of downtime at the, at the beginning of this matchup, but it would be awesome if you could give a thumbs up or a like rating down below this video. It really encourages us to do more of these showcasts, and I know a lot of you really like it, and nice comments are always great, too. Uh, another thing to note is that Yahtzee also has a YouTube channel, and you can find the link to his channel in the description of this video. I always love the shout-out. No problem. <laughs> All right, well, let's take another overview of this matchup. Not much has changed since we looked back at this, Yahtzee. Oh, Both well, teams uh, seem to be semi-stationary. Red 4 is definitely stationary. Blue 4 has some elements pushing forward, but it seems to be just fringe elements, just scouting elements. A fire team here, a fire team there. The main elements of Blue 4 are still stuck in the trees on that middle approach. 
reach out and touch me or something. Yeah, it's like they're just feeling their way blindly in the dark at this point. Well, taking it, it's a actually look, really bright. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a squad moving up right now on the the hillside. I'm, I'm interesting decision. They're they're moving across open ground, which is interesting. Consider they have a death lay that kind of moved all the way through and in, but they decide to take cover on some rocks, and they're getting pretty danger close to Stardog, who's scouting out in this bush right now. If he thinks like a bush, he will become a bush and not be spotted by those advancing <laughs> blue four. If it was anybody else, I'd be worried that they would start firing and give their position away. But being Stardog, I think he's smart enough not to do that. Nope, and we see that they're not firing at Stardog. They're firing at units down in the elephant grass. Or no, they're actually firing no, at units at inside the HQ. Yeah, That's yep. some accurate shots too coming down. Oh well, yeah, that was the element that was in the elephant grass that moved back. Probably a good move on their part. Not much cover in that elephant grass. If you get spotted, you can basically get shredded. Uh, by blind fire inside that elephant grass. So they're moving behind some hard cover and are going to be defending their position inside the HQ complex. Stardog still holding inside his bush. Man, it, I'd be scared to be in this position for him. You know, I'm scared for right. him in this position. Enemy, enemy units are just 200 meters away firing like all hell down at that HQ complex. ARs ablazing. And they're receiving not much, if any, return fire. But just as I say that, I don't know how this guy died. He's covered from basically all directions, but he's down nonetheless. As uh, Blue Four has oh, taken wow, casualty yeah. inside that rock. I'm not exactly sure how he died, but there's some accurate fire coming down from Op4. Let's take a look at what their position is like. Lots of open ground, but they do have a deflate to fall back into that they can be covered from, uh, from the Blue Four. Yeah, those guys were... They were completely behind the HQ, and I guess they decided to pull up, and now they're actually doing some good damage here. Yeah, their position is, is fairly effective for countering the Blue 4 advance right now. We see again that southernmost element led by Valar. I think they were under some fire, as we see the, the team lead is currently bandaging, so they definitely took rounds on this position. He's going to be scouting out any Blue 4 on that hillside, trying to identify where that push is coming from. But I'm kind of scared that that red four element didn't identify the sheer magnitude of the units that are approaching their way via the southern flank. There's a lot of blue four coming down that southern flank. They're entering the elephant grass now, and that elephant grass will take them to the front of the blue red four lines. Oh, I'm super excited to see what's going to happen here. Like, that, that southern flank really makes me excited. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're pushing up. I mean, as we see... Still not much in terms of movement. They've moved up approximately 50 meters from their last position. The bulk of the blue four are still holding in that force to defilade. Oh, they're pushing back now. The blue four that was at that rock, they're pulling back. Yeah, perhaps huh. that was a good position. It seemed like they lost a few guys on that pause. Two guys. They decided to retreat and take this, this objective from another angle. Saying that... Blue 4 on the southern flank have reached the elephant grass. They seem to be taking a quick stamina halt before prepping to move off once more. And uh, yeah, see, it depends on what they decide to do here. They can move through the elephant grass towards, you know, that, that gives you a pretty good direct assault on that HQ. Or they can decide to take, take the southern flank, excuse me, and move down the MSR through the elephant grass and try to take the uh, HQ complex from the southern side. Yeah, exactly. You know, I was sitting here thinking, it looks like they're going to take it straight towards the HQ, but I was really hoping that they would hug towards the uh, MSR a little bit more and take out that Valar element. Yeah, um, Valar's element, I mean, that's the only problem, right? If they decide to advance towards this HQ complex, they might be receiving some crossfire from both sides, from Valar's element, from the front towards the base, and if Stardock stays there, he can get, you know, inflating fire on the advancing units as well. Yep. Yeah. And it looks like they have one blue four guy just deep into that elephant grass now. Yeah, those blue four are advancing via the route you mentioned, Yahtzee, through the elephant grass nearest the HQ. Oh, that could be really bad. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting engagement nonetheless as we see this guy crawling very slow, going to be ramming his stamina. But they've got to, the Red 4 have to identify that because they're probably a lot closer than they expect at this point. Stardog might be caught out on the flanks of the advancing 
blue four element if he decides to stay. Or he can inflict lots of damage on the advancing blue four. But then again, he's only one guy. I think he, I mean, he probably could get one or two, but there's just so many blue four over there. That there's just too many he could do anything to. Yeah, there's a squad's uh, worth. I mean, we have one fire team currently holding at that central point before they enter the elephant grass and just near the, I guess that's the, uh, the western side of the airstrip. But looking forward at the advancing fire team. Man, this looks really cool though. Down in this uh down this middle patch of ground, this middle path between the two pieces of elephant grass. And that oh, scouting yeah. element is way forward. I'm not oh, exactly yeah. sure if this is just him getting lost in advancing or if this is a tactical consideration from Blue Four, but either way, I kinda like this. I mean they're seeing what's ahead of them, they're prodding to make sure that their force doesn't get ambushed inside this elephant grass. Apparently this guy is the one that picked the short straw because <laughs> yeah, he is he's, way in front. Uh, Blue Four Force is still advancing through this elephant grass. They are covered from both sides, so I guess this is a pretty good approach, but it's just a matter of, of this frontal assault that's going to be very difficult. It looks like the entirety of Blue Four is now going to push all the way around and into that elephant grass. Wow. Wow. Yeah, interesting consideration from their point. I, I uh, This might be a good idea, right? I mean... The other flank, the northern flank, does have a lot of open ground that they know, they know that there's off for inside these elephant grass that we're looking at right now. So that flank is fairly well compromised, although there is still a unit pushing up. One unit, that is. I don't know, I kind of like this decision. I kind of like this decision. It's just a matter of making sure that they all attack at the same time. If this first unit becomes engaged, as we see, oh. Yahtzee, take a look at this. This is going to be a close oh, quarters engagement. Right yes, now, as we see both units on screen, one advancing into the elephant grass, the other one advancing out. He's just poking. They might pass each other. Possibly not. They're both crawling. I'm not sure so exactly close. what that blue four element is doing. He's in that elephant grass, just holding position, but he's looking the opposite direction of where that red four is at. Yahtzee, are we going to take bets? Who's going to get the kill? Um, well, you know what? I think maybe the op four hurt him because he turned and started looking that direction. Yeah. So I, I think the op four might have the jump on him. I agree with you. Him. The op four tends to be looking at more of the direction where the blue four is at than the blue four where the op four is at, if that makes sense. Right. But currently, both units are stationary, and perhaps if the blue oh. four waits for his units to, you know, his friendly units That's to exactly advance. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Wow. Now it's a three on one engagement. And who is that in that bush? One. Do you have a name? Oh my gosh. Uh, Valar. That's Valar. Wow, he pushed <laughs> up from the southern flank, and he is oh surrounded at this point. <laughs> Blue Four just pushed right past Valar's position, and ladies and gentlemen, this is Elephant Grass at work concealment at his best. Oh my gosh, oh, that first man. completely passed him. Wow, so Valar in a precarious position. He's between a rock and a hard place, literally, as he's in the middle of the majority of the Blue Four attacking force. And we still have Star Oh, up Valar here sees. He's two. engaging. One oh, Blue no, Four no, no, no. down. We'll see if he oh, can get my. a two. He gets a second shot oh. to the head. And the other Blue Four are too far in front to do anything about it. They know that there's someone behind them, but they don't exactly know where it's coming from. Valar with wow. two kills in the middle of this bush and right now the advancing blue four are kind of startled They must know that something's out in front of them and they are moving into the same position that the blue four ahead of them was at If Valar can maintain his position, he might be able to get a few more kills right now of GL or, or grenade at least coming down inside this elephant grass That was pretty darn close to the up for to, for the blue four in the elephant oh grass ahead yeah. of him Wow, interesting fire. <laughs> interesting engagement right now. This is awesome. Oh, Valar changing position. Oh. He is pushing the flank. I think this is what he's got to do. He's got to pull back somehow, right? He's going to run right into who is this here? Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. We might see Valar any second emerging through that elephant grass right into the sights of this blue for a unit. Valar taking a quick stamina break or a kind of just judging his position right now. He's looking out into the valley, crawling forward. Oh, oh man. There he goes. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> awesome wow. sight lines. Valar's still alive. And look at that. Blue four are on his tail, Yahtzee. Oh, my gosh. Can wow. he get away? <laughs> But yes, he's still got another challenge. There's a blue four across the ravine from him. He's launching a gr grenade. Will it hit? No, Valar's way no, past. He's gone. 
He made. Oh my gosh. He took wow. Three. He made it out. I can't believe it. What an awesome, awesome engagement for Valar. He's gonna be retreating back to the HQ. That was a sweet engagement. That yes. Whole. Oh my gosh. Oh, what's going down over here? Okay, so we do have a blue element finally going down the MSR a little bit too. They are also under fire from uh, from that southernmost element, I believe. Yeah. Oh, elephant grass getting shot at by the Ooh. HQ guys. Yeah, they're under heavy fire. Warhol, uh, Warhol of uh, I'm not exactly sure what unit he's with, but he's under heavy fire from the southernmost op four lines. There's a return fire. We'll see if the op four are suppressed. Yes, they are definitely suppressed, taking heavy fire. You hear the bullets ricocheting near this this stone wall as the AR gunner decides to retreat. Good, good, probably move on his part. What about the middle engagement? As we see, ooh, they're getting close. They're getting close as we take an overhead view. Those blue four infantry boxes you can see are approaching a bunch of op four boxes near this HQ complex. And as they become engaged, we're going to be seeing what might be the final engagement of this match, or at least the main battle of this match for the HQ complex. Ooh, that was a great shot. Yeah, blue four are just dying. On side this wall near the one-story white building. There's two collapsed along that wall as well as I believe that's a MMG. So that's an important asset lost by the blue four. As we look at the numbers, Yahtzee, it seems True. like to me the red four have maintained or at least gained the numerical advantage. Oh, most definitely. They're, this is not looking good for blue four at all. They need to pull something out of their hat. Yeah, I mean, there's, what, one unit left on this main frontal assault. He's hiding in some elephant grass. Not much he can do. And look at that, Stardock still holding his position as the frontal most <laughs> element inside that bush. I mean, Gret on his part, he's been holding his position throughout this engagement. That poses a threat to any of the units, off four units, or blue four units, excuse me, advancing on the flanks. So we and see some is... just scattered units on the extreme yeah, flanks on both sides, just holding. What is drab doing <laughs> he is so far north out by himself with binos he might be trying to scout to determine the angles of the op four you know i'm not exactly sure there must be some kind of tactical reasoning for this i suppose it's just some kind of recon element scouting out the op four positions but unfortunately he's got to pull up and make something happen for his team now they're on the losing end of this battle you know this is one reason that i kind of liked the uh, the flanking elements the way they had it set up to begin with instead of all pushing down into that elephant grass because now like as long as op four has that one kill zone that everybody's funneling into blue four can't do anything they lost their positioning they lost their overwatch they had and that was really important i agree with and you they, yahtzee yeah i mean they've all they've turned this three-pronged assault into a one-pronged kind of you know i guess engagement if anything they're not really advancing forward at this time no, definitely not. And, I mean, if they keep going through that elephant grass, Op 4 has it pretty much surrounded. You know, you got that, well, I guess it was Valar's unit, but uh, <laughs> we'll say it's Ixus and Evil he Mike over units, there. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. Where is Valar? You know, is he pulled back into the base? Uh, no, he's pulled, he yeah, he's pulled back across the elephant grass. There is yeah, a yeah. Blue 4 unit fairly close to that HQ compound. He's holding in some elephant grass. Zim, yep, he is furthest one. Oh no, we got some guys really close, right across the street from the HQ. Oh yeah, they are moving up. That 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 HQ building is taking some GLs. Wow, very really accurate too. <laughs> and the, please tell me this next guy is not going to crawl underneath oh, there as well. Oh no, <laughs> this wall has been a death trap for the blue four. As we see the remnants of other blue four units alongside this wall. I mean, if you see your buddy crawl through a hole and instantly die, I'm not going to crawl through that hole as well. <laughs> He's making his decision right now, but it is not looking good for Blue for at this time, Yahtzee. No. And the, um, I, there's throughout that engagement, there was a large Blue 4 force sitting by this initial crossroads where the elephant grass begins and the airfield ends that hasn't moved throughout that engagement. They're finally deciding to move through the elephant grass now to make what is probably the final push for Blue 4. 
which could be a good thing. Maybe Opor completely lost track of these guys, so that could be good for them, but still, I do not like how everyone's funneling through the elephant grass. No, it is a scary kill zone, and that's exactly the kill zone that uh, Redford needed if they were to even out the odds of this matchup. Stardog, the, I guess the host of this event, giving the blue for the five minute warning, five minutes left to capture this HQ complex. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a overtime clause for Friday Night Fight. If this complex is under heavy assault or there's a major engagement happening for the objective, there will be an overtime rule extending the match by however long that engagement takes place until it dies down to a reasonable level. But I don't see that major engagement happening at this point. No. Oh, um, the Mercy guys will have to, and I guess some remnants of OGC too, they need to push hard if they're going to do anything but yeah they're they're the last main assault squad for blue four and they are advancing through the elephant grass in in fairly significant numbers but oh they're under fire perhaps that's stardog firing at them maybe not oh there's that group there's one guy um very south he took a guy out there's one red down oh very that? nice yeah Oh, wow, that's going to be a fairly close quarters engagement right now. Yeah, Ixus is down. I was wondering where that guy went to. <laughs> Evil Mike going to be advancing towards his former buddy's location, taking up positions by a very small stone wall. I'm not exactly sure if he knows that there's an enemy in front of him. Poor Zim over here. He's about to get destroyed in the elephant grass. <laughs> Oh, no, he took one. Oh, wow. Zim under heavy fire inside that <laughs> elephant grass. Oh, it's a precarious position nonetheless as we take an overhead view of this base battle. That's taking place right now. Still significant units inside that base, but it looks like we just had another uh, blue fort casualty as that sidebar dropped by one less. The main assault squad element seems to be holed up right now and under fire. That's another blue four casualty. Man, this assault is not going well, Yassi. No, not at all. And then you hear you have Stardog coming up behind that main blue four element too. So this, this is just not looking good. <laughs> not looking good at all. As we'll see what Stardog can do as he's advancing really close. But he might be taking some friendly fire as they don't know that Stardog is that close to the enemies. <laughs> He's going to be flanking down this approach, and we're going to follow him on his quest to outflank the enemy oh, units. He yeah. sees one. Is he going to take the shot? Two. Yep. That's one wow. down. That was two down, right? Yeah, well, well, Stardock took one, but on, on side that blue four position, there's at least four blue four casualties at this oh, point. Yeah, two everywhere. left. Three left. <laughs> oh, my. This is just ugly. Blue Four have basically been pushed into this small crevice between elephant grass and some open ground, and they are under heavy fire from the base and from their flanks. Not much they can do, Yahtzee. They got to pull something out of their head big time if they want to come up with at least, you know, getting some kills at the end of this match. But Stardog is going to be pushed right now as the Blue Four unit is pushed in the center of this elephant grass. They don't know that Stardog's on their flank. There's the shots. Return fire, but Stardog manages to pull through with the engagement. This is I believe Stardock died in that engagement. No, no, he's still up. He's still up. Oh, he's still up. Um, well, out of all of this, the guy that's by himself in the south, he he seemed to live. Yeah, he's still <laughs> alive, right? He's gotten pretty close yeah. to the uh, to the front lines Check as out. well. He's going to be behind the off forward defenders as nobody's going to be firing at him across this open ground. Yeah, the time will probably run out before he gets to do anything too good, but he did take out Ixus and Evil Mike. That is true. That is true. <laughs> But, oh man, Stardog though, They're, he's going to get these two, yeah. Yeah, it's one down. Let's we'll see if we can get the second. Blind firing into the elephant grass. Nothing. Stardog is deciding to relocate. Still some more blind firing. Let's take position from Stardog's viewpoint. He is crawling down through the, I guess, hole in between these two elephant grass. I'm not sure why my camera keeps flipping back to the HQ building. Interesting engagements inside this elephant grass. That always causes, makes for some very fun stuff. Oh, Stardog hears him. He's looking right at him. 
Yep. Oh my gosh. Damn. That <laughs> elephant how grass. He killed, but yeah, he got a bunch. And this is the defender's advantage just coming into fruition. If they have defensive, you know, positions inside this elephant grass, and they know the blue force coming at them and what their aim is, the H A AKA the HQ building, it is just a death trap in between these two large elephant grass, uh, you know, sections. So it looks like Yahtzee. Red 4 is going to pull through the defense with the victory at this time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's just a waiting game to determine when the administrators decide that this match is over. Definitely. Yeah, that was... Um, I don't even know. Oh, There's carnage <laughs> down in this ravine. What's the whole... Okay, concealment is great, but once they know you're there, there's no... There's no protection from anything. And, uh, and the thing was, they, they just took so many so much fire from individual units hiding inside that elephant grass, invoking some something of guerrilla style tactics. Uh, hiding, you know, from the bushes, attacking, changing their positions, attacking again. That they just couldn't couldn't do anything to defend against it. Maybe if it was a whole team engaged inside this elephant grass, they would have deemed it, you know, a proper threat. Uh, but because it was only one guy and, and they didn't exactly know where he was, they didn't decide that that, that approach was compromised and they paid the price for it as a result. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> oh Shots coming down from the AR. Firing towards positions in the elephant grass near the HQ compound, but he's going to be faced with five op four defenders to his front as well as an op four no that's Ixus's last position down to his rear match is winding down Yahtzee again was a pretty slow match for the beginning action picked up greatly inside this elephant grass during the middle as we see the ghosts of the blue four elements you can see these boxes of dead blue four units on your screen where they all went down but yeah, epic engagements, um, but now it's just a waiting game to determine when the match ends. Start out calling game time. That is overtime. Oh, he's saying overtime. Mm -hmm. Interesting yeah. decision. It looks like Op4 is going to push through the elephant grass. Maybe they think there's more in there. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, see, if you can message starting and just let him know. That there yeah. is, there's not much of an engagement going to happen here. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to the 10th episode of Arma 3 Showcast. I know it's got to be the slow one, and it has had its epic moments in the middle. And that juicy middle is what we come for when we do these Arma 3 matches. Uh, lots of maneuvering, lots of tactics at play. But at those peak moments of action, it is supremely lots of lots of fun. As the match is wound down right now, and it's just a matter of time before GG is called in red for is declared the victors. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you do like these videos, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Armor 3 Shoutcast and Armor 3 content to come in the future. Yeah, and uh, thanks again for having me, Mike. Hey, no problem, Yassi. Yeah, it was awesome fun. I mean, uh, lots of, lots of, lots of uh, just <laughs> talking about nothing in the middle and the end here. But yeah. those moments of action were awesome. And uh, um, uh, uh, that that first Valar move he did there—that was just that was pretty you know, epic. beautiful. Yeah, I, I think it was just part of the surprise that we last saw him on this extreme southern <laughs> flank, and all of a sudden he appears in the center, right on top of the outfor. Just very unexpected. <laughs> I was like, what? Who is it? It's Baylor. What? <laughs> That's part of the epicness. That was, that was just so crazy. Yeah, see, I think it's only a matter of time, so I'm probably going to end the shoutcast here. Thank you very much for commentating with me, Yahtzee. Oh, yeah, no problem. Anytime. And we will see you here next time on Arma 3 Shoutcast.